Throughout human history, hundreds of thousands of ships have sunk. Most of them have already disintegrated, and another chunk are in hard-to-reach areas of the ocean. Some sunk during war, others because of poor visibility or accidents. A third group was sunk on purpose. But the stories of these sunken ships do not always end in the ocean depths. Some are still visible, have their own surprising stories, and are popular tourist destinations. Schooner Sweepstakes Although the ship sunk back in 1885, its remains still amaze visitors of the Fathom 5 National Marine Park. Since the ship is only 20 feet below the surface of Lake Huron, you don't need to be a diver to see it. We know the double-deck wooden schooner weighed about 218 tons. It was built in 1867 in Burlington and was transporting coal when it was damaged. Repairs were attempted, but the damage was too serious. So it sunk, but not before the coal was unloaded. Although the sweepstakes is falling apart more and more, it's still one of the best-preserved 19th-century schooners that plowed through the Great Lakes in North America. The ship was 23 feet wide and about 119 feet long and is supported by metal beams inside the wreck. Additionally, there is a wire fence to block divers from going inside because they can accelerate its deterioration. A picture of the sunken yacht Mar Sem Fim exploded online in 2012, but not everyone knows about its voyage in the ice. April 7th should have been a great day for Joao Lara Mesquita. The amateur captain and professional journalist had given his whole life to what he loved, recording the news and documentary films about Antarctica. The voyage to film a documentary was carefully planned. There were four crew members, including Mosquita, and 22 pounds of film equipment. Marsem Fim was well equipped, but the changing weather and ferocious Antarctic character test the durability of everything that comes into its area. Not everyone passes the test. Waves toss the ship from side to side like a twig, and ice in the Ardley Cove hit the ship, flipping it on its side. The crew sent out an SOS. Luckily, the Chilean Navy ship Frey was nearby and went to help. It took two days to get through the five-foot waves and hellish 60-plus miles per hour winds to save them. All of the crew members were rescued and made it home safely. But Antarctica kept Marsem Fim. The freezing water had sunk the deck and covered it in thick ice. The hull froze and split when it later expanded because of compression. The yacht sank to the bottom and remains about 30 feet deep. The crystal clear water couldn't hide the shipwreck. Like a solitary underwater ghost, the yacht was in Antarctica's prison for 10 long months when the famous picture of the ghost ship spread like wildfire. This was a huge blow to Jao Lara Mesquita. He was sorry for his ship, but his important documentary footage and equipment was still inside. Mosquita decided to raise his yacht no matter what. Divers, underwater engineers, and rescuers created a special device to pull Marsem Fim up. They attached beacons and inflatable buoys to the yacht and gradually inflated them. The mission was a success. Marsem Fim was raised and taken to the coast. USS Arizona on December 7, 1941, the battleship USS Arizona was experiencing a normal morning. The signal flags were already raised on the bridge and sailors were approaching it. It should have been a normal Sunday morning in Hawaii, but Japanese bombers were five minutes away from the base. At 8 a.m., time stopped for the USS Arizona. The battleship was laid down in 1914 at the Brooklyn Navy Yard and FDR was there, the man who would also speak the final words for the ship. The sudden attack happened at dawn, while Pearl Harbor slept soundly, when Japanese fighters came from the north 
and carried out two rapid attacks. The USS Arizona battleship was destroyed 13 minutes after the first attack. After 8.04, five bombs hit the ship but bounced off a cannon barrel. The rest exploded and the battleship soon exploded as well. The flames reached 790 feet high. This caused another powerful explosion. Underwater investigations showed there were no reasons to suspect torpedoes. Physical evidence indicates that the battleship was hit by air bombs since there is a layer of gunpowder. Digital analysis removed that layer and a group of specialists concluded that the only bomb dropped by a bomber penetrated the deck and fell into the stern storage where the ammunition was. It exploded from the explosion and the chain explosion damaged sector after sector causing the destruction that can be seen today. The fire burned on the Arizona for two days. Out of 1,512 crew members, 1,177 died. Saving the ship was impossible, so the ship was decommissioned and the hull sank in the harbor. In 1962, a memorial was placed above the water to straddle the sunken battleship. It cost $500,000 to make, and most of it was from private donations or the income from Elvis charity concerts. Today, the Arizona Memorial is open and is visited by over 1.5 million people a year. Every U.S. president has gone to visit it at least once. Olympia the remains of this half-sunken ship are near a Greek island near the Kalatorissida beach. It's an old merchant ship that was called Island when it was built in 1950. But years later, in 1979, it was renamed to Strymon. In 1980, it sailed under the name Olympia. The ship sailing under the Cyprus flag sunk in February 1980 when it tried to hide in a cove during a bad storm. The attempt to drop anchor there led to the ship breaking on the rocks in the Liver Cove in Calateratissa. Luckily, the entire crew was rescued. The Olympia shipwreck is one of the most interesting tourist sites in Amorgos. It is still there, damaged by the furious waves that slowly tear it apart, creating a unique sight. Rusted and half-sunken, it completes the picture of this small beach. You can get there either by boat or by climbing down the fairly large slope with rocks and shrubs. The shipwreck on Amorgos became widely known in 1998 when some scenes for Luke Besson's Big Blue was filmed there. There are many interesting mysteries and unsolved questions associated with the large cargo ship Evangelia. It was 431 feet long, 57 feet wide, and 57 feet tall. It ran aground off the coast of Romania in 1968, near Costanesti. The story of its construction is also very interesting. It was built in 1941 and was originally called Saxon Star II. The cargo ship was built at the Harland and Wolf Harbor, where the Titanic was built. During the war, it was used to transport wounded soldiers and from 1946 to 58, the ship was used as a transport ship. In 1959, the cargo ship was sold to a Greek company and renamed Evangelia, which would use the ship for 10 years until it suddenly ran aground near a Romanian resort. Now, there are some interesting ideas that support the ship being run aground at the order of its owner, who wanted to get the insurance money. During the catastrophe, there was a very thick fog off the coast, but the sea was very calm. The Constanta port received an SOS on October 14th from the Evangelia. Albatross pulled the Evangelia on the beach, and its crew seemed to be anxious to continue their trip. But the rescuers found the Evangelia there still the next day. Later, an investigation revealed that the crew intentionally damaged the ship and sent it to the coast. It turns out the license to navigate the ship had expired two years prior, and the owner convinced the crew to destroy it to get insurance money. 
After the catastrophe, all the equipment was carefully checked and no failures were found. The enterprising Greeks tried to bribe the Romanian rescuers, but in the end left the ship without the insurance. The ship would remain there for 44 long years before splitting in half because of a strong storm in December 2012. Locals were extremely grateful to the Evangelia's previous owners. Since the ship became a huge symbol for Costanesti, and draws many tourists to vacation in Romania. The SS America, also known as the American Star, was an ocean liner with an unusual, and without exaggeration, heroic story. Its construction began in 1938, and up until it sank in 1994, it had many names. They include the USS West Point, SS Australis, SS Italis, and SS Alfredos. The liner was laid down at a harbor in Newport News, Virginia. The ship's interior was made quite cozily, and the decor was made with non-rusting steel and ceramics. The ship was launched in 1939, and U.S. First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt was present. The liner didn't serve as a civilian vessel for long. World War II made its adjustments, and the ship was repurposed as a Navy ship. On June 1, 1941, an order was signed to make it a military transport under the name USS West Point. During its service, the ship transported 350,000 soldiers, more than any other ship. And in 1944, it set the record of transporting 9,305 men at once. When it finished its service, it was examined in Newport News, where it was re-equipped to a passenger ship, once again, and named the SS America. After the war, the ship sailed from New York to Havre to Bremerhaven and was loved by many tourists who sailed on it. Now, in its later years, the ship changed owners many times and sailed many different routes until it was sold for metal scrap in the late 1980s for $2 million. However, after the demolition of the lifeboats, the scrapping was stopped. In February 1993, the ship was resold for its final refitting to a five-star hotel and left the coast of Greece on a tugboat. The tugboat and SS American ran into a storm in the Atlantic, which detached the ships. Six people went from the tugboat to the liner to reattach it, but they were unsuccessful. Two more tugboats were called to help, but they also couldn't do anything. The SS America's crew was evacuated by helicopter, and the ship ran aground near the Canaries the next day. The ship split into two pieces. By 1996, the stern had finally broken apart and sunk, and the aft was still on the coast, drawing the attention of tourists and photographers. In November 2005, the aft fell to its side. This was because most of the liner was washed away by the ocean. Currently, Nothing of the ship remains on the surface. It has all sunk underwater. Well, that's all for today. Leave a like if you'd like to see something like this with your own eyes. And don't forget to comment too. Let me know what you learned in this video. And we'll see you again next time.